Hello and welcome back. I'm really excited today because any day I get to create a video about Ansible, that's a good day. Ansible has always been one of my favorite technologies as soon as I've discovered it. In today's video, we are going to explore the concept of ad hoc commands. And what that means is running one-off commands against your servers because every now and then, Maybe you want to execute a command against your servers that falls outside of the scope of the playbooks that you have written. So let's get started. All right, so let's get started and run some ad hoc Ansible commands. But first of all, I'll show you guys the servers that I'm working with. I have three tabs on my screen right now. Each of these three are Linode instances. They are all running Debian. And I have an instance called controller. That's essentially the Ansible controller, the system I'll be running all the ad hoc commands from. And then on the second tab, I have a server that I have named in the tab Nginx. You can see in the bash prompt, the host name is set to server one. And then I have server two in the last tab. And I have that labeled WordPress because I intend on setting up WordPress on that instance, and I intend on setting up Nginx in this instance. However, I'm not going to set up WordPress or Nginx in this video. This is just an example scenario showing you a typical configuration where you have a controller, and then you have two or more other nodes. Now the controller doesn't have to be a server, although it often is. The controller could just be your laptop or another Linode instance, like it is in my case. The term controller, in regards to Ansible, is used to describe the device from which you are running Ansible commands. And I already have Ansible installed. If you don't already have Ansible installed on your controller device, then installing it, at least on Debian or Ubuntu instances, is simply a matter of running sudo apt install Ansible, like you see on your screen right now. And that gives you access to the Ansible command. As you can see here, mine is located at user bin Ansible. In addition to that, I've also created an inventory file. And here it is right here. So what I have are two of my Linodes, basically my Nginx and WordPress servers. I have the IP addresses for those instances right here in this host file. I have two groups, an Nginx group and a WordPress group. And grouping your hosts is how you can logically separate them from one another and have custom configuration for each server based on its intended purpose. Now, all of that is outside the scope of this video. So anyway, these two servers are going to be the targets for the ad hoc commands that we're about to run. On your end, you could just simply create an inventory file when you first install Ansible, you will have a default sample host file. You could back that up and create a new one and then add the IP addresses for your Linode instances into that file. And you could choose to group them like I have here if you wish, or you could just simply add the IP addresses in that file and leave it as simple as that. So anyway, let's get started. So to run ad hoc commands, what you're gonna do is run the Ansible command and then you'll give the command the dash M option. Dash M is for module. Ansible has a ton of different modules that you can use. And there's even additional modules that you can download from Ansible Galaxy. That's beyond the scope. Just wanted to let you know that it's possible. And then you give the dash M option, the name of the module that you actually want to use. And as a very simple test, we're going to use the ping module. Now you're probably familiar with the ping command in Linux. It's a very popular command. And that command allows you to, well, ping a server. The ping command has become both a command name as well as a verb in the IT industry nowadays. But essentially the ping command allows you to test to see whether or not a host is on the network, because if it is, it'll send a reply. Now the ping module in Ansible is a bit different than the ping command in Linux. They're both named the exact same thing. And by looking at this, you might assume that the module ping is going to use the ping command under the hood, 
but actually what it's doing is making a real connection to the target servers. And next, what we're going to do is add the dash K option. And the dash K option, what that's going to do is it's going to trigger Ansible to ask you for the password that it will use to facilitate the connection. And Ansible by default uses SSH to make the connection to the target. So without this option, it's actually going to fail. And then what I'm going to do is paste in the IP address for the server that I want it to connect to. And if you have a fully qualified domain name, you can add that here as well. I'll press enter. It's asking me for the SSH password. And as you can see, the command was a complete success. And like I mentioned, when you use the ping option in Ansible, it's not the same as the ping command. It's actually making a real connection. And as you can see here, it made a connection to the server and it discovered what the Python interpreter is on that system. And it could only know that if it actually did make a connection. So by running this command, we know that our Ansible controller or whatever machine we are running Ansible commands from is able to make an SSH connection to the target server. Now, another trick that we can do, and this is perhaps even more useful, and that is we can use Ansible to run an ad hoc command against every node in our inventory file. And we can do that by removing the IP address or node name, then going over here and we will run Ansible all because we want to run this against all the hosts in our inventory file. And I'll type in the password for SSH yet again. And it was able to connect to both of the nodes. Now, obviously this would have failed if I had a different password on each of the two hosts. It only asked me for the password one time and it did work because I just so happened to have the same password on both of those servers. However, it's a bad practice to have the same password on everything, but we're going to let that slide in this case because those are just test servers that'll end up being deleted by the end of the day anyway. Now, what if you want to run an ad hoc command and you want to actually use a module that doesn't exist? Now, the thing is, Ansible has modules for just about everything that you could think of, but there's no way that they can accommodate everything. So perhaps you might actually need to run a shell command against the target node. So what I'm going to do is run Ansible. I'll paste in the IP address of the node. Again, the Nginx server in my case. And the module that I'm going to run is the shell module. Last time we ran the ping module, and now we're running the shell module. And what we're going to do as an argument to the shell module is tell it what command we actually want to run. I will type the command in single quotes. And what I think might be a fun example is pulling the distribution release information from the target server. And we can do that by running cat slash Etsy slash OS hyphen release. And then I will add the dash K option at the end, because again, I want it to prompt me for the password for SSH. Let's see what happens. I'll type in the password. And there you go. We have all the distribution release information right here. It's effectively the contents of the slash Etsy slash OS release file that's present on all the instances. And inside that file, we have all this text. Now we can ignore this warning up here. It's very common that when something is going to be deprecated or changed in Ansible, it'll let you know. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take action right away but Ansible will often let you know of upcoming changes that you should be aware of for future versions. And in our case, we don't have to worry about that at all. We can leave it up to the developers of the Linux distributions to figure out how to handle that upcoming change because that doesn't apply to us. But anyway, I'll clear the screen and we can look at another example. So here we have the previous command. And I'm going to again run another shell command, but this time, I'm going to run a shell command that requires root or sudo privileges. So I'll change this right here to fdisk-l, and you can't run that without sudo. And then 
I'll change the lowercase k to an uppercase k. And the difference is that the lowercase k asks for the SSH password, and the uppercase k asks for the sudo aka become password. And when it comes to Ansible, the terms sudo and become are basically the same thing. Technically, they are different. It's beyond the scope. But at this stage, we could simplify it down to become and sudo being the same thing because they essentially are. And that's what dash k does. It asks for the sudo password. Now, having an uppercase k to force Ansible to ask us for the sudo password doesn't itself make Ansible use sudo for the command. So for that, we need to add dash dash become just like that. And become in Ansible means that user privileges need to be changed in order to run the command. It's going to default to sudo, but there's other privilege escalation methods that are beyond the scope of this video. But if you don't tell it to use something other than sudo, then become will use sudo. And then if we want to run the command as a different user, you could type dash u and then the name of the user. And on those servers, I have created another user and that username is jdoe. So walking through the command again, we have Ansible right here because, well, we want to work with Ansible. And we have the IP address right here of a Linode instance that we want to run a module against. The dash M option allows us to choose which module we actually want to use. In this case, we want to run a shell command, just like last time. And with the dash A option, we tell it what command in particular we want to run. In this case, fdisk-l. That command does require sudo, so we will need to provide a sudo password, and we will be prompted for a sudo password with this option here. Dash dash become, it's a little wrapped here. Can't see it, it's off the screen, but I promise you it is there. It says become. That tells Ansible, use sudo. And after that, again, my screen recorder is wrapped. There's a dash u option, and that allows me to add the username jdoe or whatever username I want to use for this command. Now, we're not ready to run this command just yet. We need to add another option. And that option is the dash lowercase k. We had that last time. And that triggers Ansible to ask for the SSH password. And that might seem a little redundant, and it kind of is. We have the uppercase k option to have it prompt for the sudo password and the lowercase k for it to prompt for the SSH password. The lowercase k is required because, well, it has to make an initial connection to the server to run anything, and the server is going to require a password, unless, of course, you have set up key authentication. And after it connects, it's going to attempt to run the fdisk-l command. And in order to do that, it's going to need to use sudo, and that requires the dash uppercase k option for the sudo password. Now, of course, you can consolidate this, but I think this is fine for now. I'll type in the SSH password. And now it's prompting me for the become password, and it mentions that it defaults to the SSH password. So I'm going to just press Enter. And we can see some output here. We see the output of the fdisk-l command. It gives us information about our hard disk. As you can see, we have SDA up here and SDB down here. So we were able to run a command against our server that required privilege escalation. And there are other examples in the documentation article that matches this video, but you saw several examples of ad hoc commands that you can run against your Linode servers. Ansible is the gift that keeps on giving. It's one of those technologies that the more you learn, the more you realize there's more to learn. And I don't mean that in an overwhelming sense. It's not overwhelming. It's just that you'll keep discovering new and more awesome things that you can utilize Ansible for, and that keeps it exciting. I have used Ansible for about five years or more at this point, and I am still having just as much fun today as I did when I first started. And in this video, we covered ad hoc commands, which is awesome. It's just one of the many features, and we will explore more about Ansible on this very channel as we go along. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you again very soon.